Hello, I'm Peter Kaplowski, the programmer for the Mid uh, Midnight Madness section, but I'm here as a discovery programmer today to talk about Doug Doug. And joining me is writer director Ritwick Parikh. Ritwick, I'm so, so excited to have you and to discuss this wonderful movie. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's an honor uh, well, to be part of this. I mean, the thing that struck me the the most uh, when I watched your film was reading your, your your cover letter, and you you mentioned that it was inspired by true events and your real experiences visiting temples in uh, Rajasthan. Mm -hmm. Can you speak a bit more about the origins of the story? Because initially, I thought it was sort of like loosely inspired, but you've been showing me articles about just how yeah. real uh, some of the events of this film correlate with what actually happened. Yeah, so my biggest worry, like not worry, like my major concern when I was writing the film was like, like it may sound like a something from Monty Python series or something like, like uh, Life of Brian and uh, the other one like Holy Grail, but the the incident is only such so such bizarre and like uh, honestly there is like a huge, huge following about that temple and that's not only one temple like there are so many temples in india which have their own unique stories and like their own different uh, what do you call it like different uh, cultures and rituals like we have a temple where it's like filled with rats and people just come there and offer like food to rats uh, in rajasthan only you'll find like lots and lots of temples like that so then i was like uh, the main main like the main thing about these temples and all is like people have their honest faith mm -hmm. like the belief is so strong uh uh and it again yeah, like it performs like miracles and like people's like health gets well and all that thing like it's amazing so in the end it's all about like faith and if you believe in it uh yeah i mean if you believe in it i mean at the end of the day i mean you know the twist of the movie is that you have a protagonist who knows the mm. truth, but when faced when faced with the events that have happened and transpired, he has no choice anymore but to fully embrace the faith and believe. And it is about yeah that that question of, of belief and the power of faith. Um, but I was really amazed that yeah there, that there is this temple with a motorcycle and it was there's a similar sort of mm -hmm. backstory with a motorcycle that that disappeared from the police station and then would manifest yeah. somewhere else. So. It's it's really fascinating, and the other the, the, it leads me to another question, which is: did, did you shoot this in the area that inspired the stories? Or did you shoot it somewhere else? Uh, no, so the geography was totally different. So it's uh, the real temple is near Jodhpur. It's like a very desert state, desert mm -hmm. district. We shot somewhere in near uh, near the capital of Rajasthan, Jaipur. It's a small place called Ramgarh, and I also wanted a distinct look for the film, like. Uh, I wanted it to look like a Western film. Mm. Uh, it's a very small area in Rajasthan, which looks like that. So I was like, okay, for like Indian audience and everyone, it will be like a new world only, like a mm. little bit comical. And even the mountains, it looks like you have hand drawn it. Like there is like very simple lines in the mountains. It's not like, not like very wavy and zigzag. It's very like, like you have hand drawn it, like it feels like you have hand drawn it. So I wanted that feel. So that's why I chose that location. And also logistic wise also, like it was near my house, you have uh, <laughs> grown up and all that. So, yeah. Um, I mean, you have an art director background and you're an illustrator as well. Uh, and this film is so precise in its form. Were you storyboarding these sequences or was it, was, was it, were you just that familiar with the area? Uh, no, we storyboard entire film, like yeah. every single shot, uh, though we improvise a couple of things at that moment, but entire movie was storyboarded like from start to the end. I can show it to you also later, like even the opening seeing those lights and everything was storyboarded like, and the best thing was we got what we wanted and that was a good thing. Like I was very happy about it. Now the title of the film, Doug Doug, it refers to both, uh, what refers to the, the, the motorcycle engine, like the Doug 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 noise that mm. it makes. Um, but I also was in my research saw that Doug is a Hindi word for like a breast or an udder. And I started thinking about the balloon motif that also kind of looks like a breast or an udder, the way it inflates. I'm just wondering, were there, am I making correlations out of nowhere? Was uh, there? 
no 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 so it's a very famous term like so there are like these biker gangs also of royal enfield like they normally drive royal, royal enfields and yeah and the royal enfield makes that sound like it's like duk 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 so i was like and all this whatever you see in the film is just a noise mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. that's the only relationship with the real temple it's that name mm. duk duk so that bike the original bike makes that sound mm-hmm. and from that sound i thought it's a, it will be a nice name for the film so yeah. it's all just a noise like nothing else okay okay cuz i yeah. almost i kind of had this idea too that it becomes something that the community becomes dependent on like they you know in, in a sense that they're sort of suckling at this temple uh in, in a sense because it gives them it gives them their wishes it gives them what they need to mm-hmm. to continue on it gives them the confidence uh to live um and i also uh that 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 other really striking detail is this bengali uh, billboard what sort of inspired that idea or that it it almost felt like a western influence like uh, the great gatsby the eyes of jt thuckleberg or, or so, uh, ecclberg uh, so it was it was serving two purposes so the main brief for me while i was writing the film was ki i i don't need to put any exposition in the film mm-hmm. i just need to show and mm-hmm. so for uh, so when that person dies uh, it's a night so we did like something over there which you see it in the morning you immediately recollect okay it's that same location mm-hmm. so i thought of like couple of ideas but then i was like okay this this works better because there can be a hidden subtext to it like what is a magician like magician do like illusions and everything so whatever you see it's an illusion like for example like uh, in one shot the bike's headlight turns mhm uh, when it arrives at the second time but uh, it happens because of the wind because wind was so fast the headlight turns mm-hmm. in that mm-hmm. location and then we cut to that shot so like i i was like okay the magician billboard will be a nice metaphor for that thing and it's serving the two purposes like like without saying anything how will i show okay it's on that same location like milestone like i i can put a milestone or something like that but it's not going to work and it's like very common in like rural places and all like you find these posters of these like uh, magicians doing their like small small shows uh, so yeah so they were like two purposes it's also it also seems like i mean the curse accident seems to occur too because he's distracted by yeah, magicians yeah, yeah. <laughs> like the specifically yeah, the women on yeah, the yeah. <laughs> uh, so there is a very good billbers uh, stand up now about this thing like all great men fell Mm. fall because of women like arnold schwarzenegger and whatever like like no matter how good you are how big of a person you are you always uh, go down because of a uh, women like like it's a distraction so he was also like in the opening scene he was like fully drunk he was just fully concentrated on the road like not not giving a damn about any other thing but when he saw it so he fell Yes. And and but during yeah. that sequence too you you uh, we're hearing these sort of aphorisms these sort of st- philosophical statements that are coming from Thakur. What sort of motivated that decision? Uh may- maybe what's his psyche? What mm-hmm. he is feeling uh about the world like like what you can say like the uh, road is a life path and he's just focusing he's not distracted mm-hmm. and he's just being in his zone and just following his uh life taking his life journey and like all his like spiritual thoughts about like more stoic sorry sorry uh, stoicism yeah yeah i uh, think it's in- it's interesting because he's a character that we don't really get to know for the rest of the film because he's he's dead but in yeah, those yeah. in that moment i guess we get a sense of his world view and his philosophy um mm-hmm. uh, like very little like i didn't want to put like so much also like very few dialogues and Mm-hmm. i was really inspired from all these uh, there was this song from kevin mobby its name is harlem river uh, and i wanted to have like very very few lyrics and more like more music and you just want to enjoy that ride with him yeah i mean the music yeah. is incredible in the film can you speak a bit about the team that you work with salvage audio collective yeah uh, so salvage audio collective is a group of five people uh, all of them are have like their unique set of skills uh so i approached it to them and they really loved the idea of the film and everything and we really gelled and then we like discussed it thoroughly 
and they all worked uh, in the lockdown like why zoom only mm. uh, like everyone was in their own house working on zoom yeah wow. so that's why it took took us like a year to finish the music wow and so they and they're just playing to the image was was it a case of where they would work on their own or was it largely always inspired by the visuals of the film no no all, always inspired by visuals of the film mm -hmm. and then we always used to change the edit if we like something what they did mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. we we edited this movie thrice so first like at some places with some temp score just to give them the idea then then once uh, they come up with something then we re-edit it on their track and then again like if we are feeling like we can change something here and there and then we re-edited it uh, yeah, it's um, it's it's a really infectious score. Like at a certain point of the film, too, uh, it becomes sort of less about um, you know, sp spending time with the characters, and it really zooms out, and you just are mm -hmm. watching the growth of this religion, and it really yeah. is propelled entirely by music. So, uh, so the main character of this film is that motorbike. Yes. <laughs> like yeah. everyone else is doing their part, and it's that motorbike story. Mm -hmm. so, and how and how everyone sort of revolves around it. Um, yeah, yeah. Was it was it always a case too? Uh, to was it was very important for you structurally to uh, allow the audience to see things without sort of the the knowledge of um, Pierre's sort of you know involvement. The, uh, the the police officers who actually moved the bike was it was it like that structural device was something from the beginning that you really want the audience to fully embrace the, the 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 mystery of what's happening like it was so simple and i thought nobody will get it <laughs> no i mean yeah it was it's it's so it's it's but it's so obvious but at the same time I, mm -hmm. i'll admit when i first watched the film i didn't even think that i bought into this must be yeah. happening because this is what we're being presented with yeah so when when i got to know about the real story of this temple the my first reaction was this only <laughs> Maybe it's like policemen, like they are being drunk or they are just doing like some silly things. I don't know. Mm -hmm. That was my first reaction, like a logical answer to this. Have you shown this movie to anyone uh, in that community or anyone that knows the that, that worships Bulababa yet? No. <laughs> no, no. But they they are aware of this film. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, is there is there any controversy around that or is it no? No, no, no. no. So their main concern was not to use the same bike. Yes. Okay. And uh, I mean, so, some of the sequences that you you put on, like the big dance sequence, the big parade, like it almost becomes, you know, in order to shoot it, you're in a sense performing the worship and performing the mm -hmm. the event itself. How how is that sequence like to film? Uh, which one? That dancing scene. Yeah, uh, yeah. The big the big parade at night. Uh, it was like very simple. So, so like in in Rajasthan, we have like these. Uh, these small trucks uh, in village uh, in village and they converted into these like a very uh, like a very uh, portable uh, dj mm -hmm. so all these villagers have their own speakers and led lights and you must have seen it somewhere in this track also which is called magenta rhythm uh, have you heard of this track from dj snake uh, I don't know if I have actually heard that track. Okay, okay, no okay. problem. Uh, so the only brief they wanted was uh, the crowd was that we want to play our track and let <laughs> let us play our track and we'll dance on it. Yeah. So we tried to play some different tracks, but they were like, no, 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 we want our tracks. Okay. And yeah. But at a certain point, it just becomes a big party, and like, mm -hmm. like how controlled was it? Was it really just party, and we will just try to capture? the chaos or was it highly choreographed no 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 choreograph the only brief uh, i gave was uh, don't look in the camera <laughs> yeah of course yeah that's all that's all and otherwise everyone is like uh, that's what they do like on every weekend like it's nothing new for them even for mm -hmm. the crowd the main brief was uh, like even the crowd who who are like coming to the temple so the brief was very simple okay so it's your daily routine you go to a temple what do you do Mm -hmm. uh, so they were like, okay, yeah, we get it, and and they just do it. The main problem actually was like uh, at one point of time, uh, we had like real alcohol, 
like these small bottles of alcohol and some like villagers used to drink it and they used to get drunk and like it was damn fun oh no um yeah, yeah. uh the the um the temple at the end um where did you shoot that uh, uh, uh it's in a real temple yeah hmm. was it difficult to get permissions to 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 film there no 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 no. Uh, it's more like a private temple mm. uh, they mm. normally they used to give it for shootings and also lots mm. of uh, films have been shot there but not inside uh, mm -hmm. mainly outside the temple and we took permission from the higher priest and he was okay with it and he was like don't bring real alcohol in the temple yes yeah, uh, yeah. so that was the only concern and that's all like nothing like you will be surprised like from by my answers like everything is very simple like <laughs> no it's great i mean it, you you for 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 first film one wishes things go so well so uh, things didn't go well but yeah like oh well hang on let's let's hear let's yeah. what what was the biggest challenge then what what was the what was the hardest uh stuff to achieve on this production uh mainly weather mm. and some like conflicts with some people here and there like nothing as such mainly weather like uh, we shot uh, in the middle of the summer so the temperature was around like 52 degrees so that was our biggest concern and one once uh, one actor got an epileptic attack oh wow uh, <laughs> yeah 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 that's not uh, good in the temple only in the temple mm. only so everyone was thinking oh maybe maybe oh what are you doing <laughs> oh yeah uh, it's not good you are making like fun of we are, uh, and i was like no 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 we are not making fun of it like anything like other than that no no nothing uh, the good thing was we storyboarded everything we prepped so well so so it was just easy to communicate exactly what you yeah, were going to yeah, do yeah. and so there was no yeah. concern that it would be something else no, i mean no, no. to return to that balloon motif i it never pops it just keeps yeah. inflating but there's this always this threat of like one day is this going to get too big and, and pop why why did you decide not to pop the balloon so to speak but kind of leave it as this image of constantly inflating perpetually inflating yeah because uh, like any religion whatsoever it never ends mm. it always grows mm -hmm. uh and also i have thought of it like uh, bursting it in the end but it was not making sense mm -hmm. yeah, then, the yeah. idea, then the idea for the film was even though now you know what happened it's still going to grow yeah yeah it it yeah even even when the truth the truth is relevant at a certain point because that's yeah. not what yeah. what, what faith spells like, like story becomes uh, legend and legend becomes myth no no yeah. no story becomes myth they becomes legend yeah and yeah. print the and then print the legend yeah <laughs> so to speak um no that's terrific um and so you mentioned you had a lot of influences uh as a filmmaker including edgar wright and i certainly saw that in the uh mm -hmm. the crash zooms and the and the camera mm -hmm. work w w did you was was you know this being your first film was that an important aspect of the production to try and just do all the things that you've wanted to do uh, no 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 we didn't do everything so basically it was like to change the tone of the film mm -hmm. by mm -hmm. those zooms like mm -hmm. before that everything is like very serious and calm and like something new happens and with it, which is very bizarre and so we wanted to change the tone of the film so that's mm -hmm. why we did that and we yeah. thought maybe crash zooms are like the way to go no, I love them. I, I I love that beat too, where where they're all looking at each other, and and mm -hmm. the one cop only has the cow to look at. <laughs> there's no one mm -hmm. else. There's no one else yeah, to yeah. turn to. There's such great visual gags. And how did you how did you cast? Did you have actors in mind from your commercial experience, or was it a long casting no, process? No, no, no. So mainly, most of the actors are like first time actors. Like few mm -hmm. of them were like theater actors from Jaipur, but mostly like. the villagers the old guy and so many other even the main character pyare mm -hmm. uh, uh whose uh, wife was not having a child mm -hmm. he was the first time like uh that was his first ever acting job uh and we we did lots of workshop in the beginning so it was not a concern he's such an interesting character too because he has to play 
he's like every time he's on screen i've watched this film a few times now and when you go back his performance is telling you that like he knows the truth but at yeah. the same time it doesn't it's not obvious it doesn't come through right away mm -hmm. but the way he's carrying himself the, the guilt that is, that is on his face yeah that that is for like second time viewing like once you watch it again then you'll mm -hmm. realize oh the answer was always there <laughs> It was it was yeah. self evident the entire time. Mm -hmm. And how did you how did you settle on the motorcycle? You, you mentioned that you couldn't use the motorcycle that was that that an actual temple used. So what what were the sort of design principles in terms of finding the motorcycle? So they said no motorcycle. So that's why we uh, got a Luna. Mm, that was more of a moped, right? Yeah, moped. Yeah, or a scooter. So scooter wouldn't have looked much like that cool. So that's why we choose moped. Okay. Mm -hmm. Moped is the way to go, and the color Otherwise, schemes too. Pink, pink and blue. Was there something that sort of inspired the use of those colors, or? Yeah, so uh, so I wanted like a special branding for this religion. Like uh, when you see like all the religions, they have like different different colors to it. Like Islam, green; Hinduism, orange; Christianity, Jewism, uh, white and blue. Mm -hmm. So we wanted like a very distinct color scheme for the film uh, and then I was like okay so how we can like like again visually how we can show it so like the locals can just take it from the Luna mm -hmm. so the mm -hmm. Luna is of blue and pink color mm -hmm. so they were like okay so let's use this color and and also it looks like very calm in the desert like like it stands out also yeah if, if we if we were if we would have used like green or some other color then like immediately you won't be able to recognize oh it's for the thakur sa's temple yeah yeah did anything inspire thakur's name uh, as the as the, the did that name kind of was there any sort of meaning behind it or was it just it felt like an appropriate name for the character appropriate name like yeah yeah, yeah. well Richwick, this has been great before i before i let you go uh i just want to ask like this is your first feature you know what kind of stories are you interested in telling in the future, and um, what is next for you? And how can people keep track of uh, your career? Do you, if you want to plug your social media accounts, by all means, let people know. Like I, I, I will not do a satire certainly because I've done it. Mm. I would love to do like a cosmic horror or a sci-fi or something. Like I'm a film, I'm a film geek. I like all kinds of genres, so I would like to explore all kinds of genres. So it's important important for you to to not repeat yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Uh, and and uh, you're on you're on Twitter though and Instagram. So if people want to find you on there, they can they can keep up with your 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 filmmaking. Yeah, I hope they like it. <laughs> they yeah. will. And I, and uh, I, I'm so I can't wait for the next film. And I and uh, thanks. I want to thank everyone at home for watching Doug Doug. And mm -hmm. um, I think that we'll all look at mopeds a little differently now. <laughs> cool. Cool, cool. Thanks so much. Thank you.